Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to our worship here at Norwich Lutheran Church. Just a couple of announcements to call your attention to. Uh, first of all, all women, the Turtle Mountain Cluster for Women will be held this coming Saturday at Medagoshi Ministries. Registration begins at 10. And also, I don't know who is going, but today is the uh, annual meeting for Medagoshi Ministries. Kristen. Kristen is going, so uh, we, we thank her for that. And uh, we have a birthday today, Thelma. <laughs> so let us sing as soon as Kristen's ready. All right, here we go. at this time. I hung up on the bulletin board, the mother of the camp information already, and helped with the tool check up at Menegoshi. And yeah. so the other cool thing, there's a QR code, so you can flash that, and it'll take you to Amazon, and there's a whole list of things there, so you don't even have to really go shop, and it gets shipped right to um, the camp. So okay. it's that time. Way to support Menegoshi Ministries, the mother in the camp. Uh, QR code on the poster in the entrance area to the sanctuary. Thank you. Pastor Ben, I see George Kemper still on the curb. Yeah, I, I, I got that. Okay. Yes, um, if you hadn't heard, George Kemper passed away um, and uh, arrangements are still pending as far as I know. So keep him and his, his family and friends in your prayers. Now I invite you to please rise and turn to your setting eight worship booklet as we begin our worship with our order for confession and forgiveness. <laughs> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. <laughs> Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join our gathering song number 674 in the With One Voice in <coughs>
continues with the Kyrie in your worship booklet. in your bulletin. Let us pray. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
<coughs> Our first reading is from Acts chapter 3. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him mock? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him his perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Be to God. You will read Psalm 4 responsibly. Yes, you know what I call, O oh God, defender of my cause. <clears throat> you set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortal worlds, how long will you disarm my glory? How long will you blood delusions and seek after lies? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. <coughs> the Lord will hear me when I call. Tremble better and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence when on your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Who will hear yes. the king? Who will show us the sin good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart <clears throat> more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down to sleep. For you alone. Our second reading is taken from 1st John chapter 3. <coughs> See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin <coughs> is lawlessness. We know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Please rise for our gospel. chapter beginning with the 36th verse. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. 
For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Please be seated. I'd like to invite children forward. here to here, and many, many years ago I had a, a surgery on my knee, and that's from that, and there's a story behind that about playing football and getting hurt. Um, so, and if you look on this hand here, it's not a scar, but you can see there's little flecks of paint. I was painting the other day, and I'm not the neatest, so I got paint on my hands. And, but anything like that, there's usually a story behind it, right, that can tell us, tell, tell others something about what we experienced or they can tell us something that they experienced. And, and in our gospel today, Jesus, after he has risen from the dead, appears to the disciples. Now, how do you usually recognize somebody? Um, so, so you can remember what you look like in, in your head? Right, yeah. I have a picture of my friend um, on my um, fridge, and every time, every time I go to school, I see her. Sure, yeah. So, like, we, we recognize people by their faces, usually, right? Right? Um, or maybe their build a little bit, or their haircut, but it's usually something like that. Well, when Jesus appeared to his disciples, they didn't necessarily, well, they kind of recognized him, but they didn't think it was really him. So he showed them the scars in his hands and his feet from being nailed to the cross, and that gave them the story of Jesus' resurrection that um, was true and real, and so his scars told the story of his resurrection that uh, gave them uh, faith to believe that he was truly risen. And then so Jesus tells them to go and send, or go out and proclaim about repentance and forgiveness in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so they use the story of Jesus' scars, they use the story of their experience of seeing him and recognizing him in that to remember Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus' resurrection, and to proclaim the love and forgiveness that comes from that. And so we too have our hands and our feet and our voices to go out and proclaim and tell the story of Jesus' scars and resurrection that brings us life. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the reality of the resurrection that brings to us life and empower us to proclaim your love in all that we say and do using our hands and our voice and our feet and everything that you have given us to share your love. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up. Grace to you and peace. From God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
it was perhaps too good to be true. Many, well by now years ago, I received an email from one Ms. Zarata Ajiri Paul of Kenya. She was in need of my, of my assistance in gaining control of some $150 million that she was set to inherit from her father. But her evil stepmother was attempting, through underhanded means, to prevent her from receiving the money. She needed my help to transfer the money to an account here in the U.S. where her stepmother could not access it. Not only that, Ms. Zarata Ejiri Paul would also relocate to the U.S. and, quote, settle down with me. My compensation for providing her with my bank info and opening my home to be would be 40% of the $150 million. She told me in her email that she was anxiously awaiting my reply to give me directions for the next steps. Apparently, with very little effort on my part, I would be in possession of $60 million and perhaps have a new girlfriend. <laughs> now, as I said, this was some time ago I received this email, and alas, Ms. Zarata Ejiri Paul is still awaiting my reply. <laughs> and she will continue to wait indefinitely because in this instance, as appealing as the offer may have been, I am quite convinced that it was one that was too good to be true. Now, even if Ms. Paul's offer is not in the least bit true or real, I believe that we have all had those moments, those experiences where we feel as though it is too good to be true. Even as we are experiencing it right before our eyes, I do believe that we can truly experience things that are too good to be true. Maybe it was receiving a gift for your birthday or Christmas, or perhaps no reason at all that was beyond your expectations. Something that surprised you, something you needed, something that gave you great joy and you couldn't believe it was given to you, but it was. Maybe it was the moment your spouse said yes to marrying you. Not that you had doubts as to what the answer would be, but in the moment, it did seem too good to be true. An experience of something too good to be true is an experience we might describe as being simultaneously joyful and impossible to believe. Which is exactly what Luke tells us the disciples were experiencing. Verse 41 of our passage before us this morning, Luke writes, While in their joy they were disbelieving and wondering, the appearance of Jesus in their midst seemed too good to be true. After all, not that long ago, they had witnessed his death on the cross, his burial in the garden. And in those hours, all their hopes, dreams, and expectations about the future, about who Jesus was, were dashed and destroyed with no future seemingly at all now for them even though Jesus had tried to prepare them, had told them more than once that he would rise. As I said last week, their reality and our reality is that no one comes alive once they are dead and buried. But at this point in the story, they have heard the witness of the women about the empty tomb. In the preceding verses, Luke tells us the well-known account of the follower of Jesus named Cleopas, who had been to Emmaus and back with a com companion, rushed into the room and sharing their story of encountering Jesus on the road, how they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. And now as they are finishing the story, Jesus is suddenly there with them. He has entered into the locked room. They were surprised. They were terrified. Luke tells us they thought they were seeing a ghost. And I'm sure I would just be just as surprised and terrified as the disciples if I were witnessing what I thought might be a ghost. 
Terrified not because of the way horror movies suggest that ghosts are inherently evil, but terrified because people don't undie. Don't rise from the dead, complete with wounds and scars and the ability to eat broiled fish. Which is how Jesus puts it. He says to them, a ghost doesn't have hands and feet as he does. He encourages them to look, to touch, to discover the reality of his resurrection, to discover that he was real flesh and bone. And yet they had still had doubts because it was just too good to be true. But in their doubts, they had smiles on their faces. In their joy, they were disbelieving and wondering. So Jesus, as patient as ever with them, asks for something to eat. A ghost doesn't eat. Jesus did. He is real. The resurrection is real. It is not too good to be true. Rather, it is true and it is beyond good. For as Jesus tells them to proclaim that in his death and resurrection is granted forgiveness and life eternal, the Holy Spirit to guide and lead us in all things. And yet we may at times find ourselves still wondering if it's too good to be true. We can become frustrated with, disheartened in, and distant from God when we are faced with the difficulties and hardships in our lives. It may seem, after all, that Jesus has come, but then he goes without any reference to anything in our lives. He has never appeared to us, has he, on the Emmaus roads we travel? He has not shown up in our rooms when we've been locked in by fear or anxiety or doubt? Or has he? In those moments, those times when we want to cry out, doesn't Jesus know about what's going on with us? Doesn't he see our discouragement? Doesn't he see how life, how hard life is for us so much of the time? Doesn't he see that we, that we really don't know where to go from where we are right now? And yet, the Holy Spirit gives us faith to trust in the promise of God's word that God is with us. God gives us faith in Jesus and hope that his gifts of forgiveness and life are good and true. As with Cleopas and his companion, as with the rest of the disciples in the room with Jesus, Jesus is with all of us, every day in every way. And again, there may be times when we don't completely understand how Scripture is being fulfilled, but we know that in Christ it is and it has been. We may have those moments and times where we do not recognize Christ's presence, but he is there inviting us to broaden our vision and open our eyes to his presence with and around us at all times. It's like the man who lived in a floodplain. And one spring... Early in the springtime, there was a radio report that saying that year was going to be the highest floods in a hundred years. The man listened and thought, well, okay. Sure enough, a couple weeks later, the floods started rising. Almost to the point where he had to just stay on the second floor of his house. And somebody came by in a boat and said, hey, do you need some help there? And he said, no, I trust God. He'll, he'll help me out. A little while later, he's up on the roof, and a helicopter flies overhead, and they scream down, Hey, do you need some help there? Do you want to get out of here? He said, Nope, nope. I trust God. God will help me out of this. Well, eventually, the floodwaters carried him away, and he died. And he gets to heaven, and he's with God, and he's saying, God, I trusted you. I tried to do all the things that you had called me to do, and yet, when it came time for my hour of need, you weren't there. And God said, what do you mean? I sent you a radio report, I sent you a boat, and I sent you a helicopter. <laughs> Each of these could have been a means of rescue and joy for the man. They could have been too good to be true in their own right. He could have been disbelieving of the timing of each encounter, but the truth of their presence and the author of salvation 
was both good and true. All this is to say that God is present with us in more ways than we can imagine. A presence made known to us by the Holy Spirit, but with us because of the power of Jesus' resurrection. Which is not too good to be true, but is both true and good. Amen. We sing our hymn, LBW number 496. <laughs> Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. 
calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate, that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and clear for all people. Lord, in your mercy. God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. Especially we lift to you, Miles Passa, Chase Jones, Carol Randa, Marsha Taylor, Dick Lundy, Donna Grilly, Elias Sheely, Stephen Dietz, Lane Johnson, Linda Froenfelter, Dennis Lundy, Mary Valentine, Audrey Morrison, Dwayne Patterson, Jerry Anderson, Russell Thompson, Bob Bailey, Bruce Wright, Rex Lenton, Jennifer Erickson, Evelyn Gottmissley, and the family and friends of George Kemper. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in your ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in the loved community. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our resting place, your Son Jesus promised that we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God, Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. I invite you to share a greeting of peace with those gathered here with the body of Christ. Please be seated at this time, we'll have our morning
Let us pray. Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory, through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. You may come forward. The table is ready.
go in peace. And William, please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sing our sending song number 754 in the blue with one voice in the
Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad.